So our patient was an IT, uh, 80, uh, 89 year old uh, man who was admitted to uh, emergency department due to acute chest pain. Uh, myocardial infarction was excluded. However, uh, the patient underwent PCI multiple times uh, in the proximal LED circ uh, due to uh, prior myocardial infarction. And also the patient underwent multiple interventions in the proximal RCA uh, due to uh, multiple risk stenosis. Uh, and the patient had coronary risk factors as well. Uh, we found mild disease in the LED and proximal circ. However, the most uh, uh, severe lesion was the uh, proximal RCA instant tristenotic lesion in, uh, yes. Uh, we delivered an all-star guide wire uh, to the distal rumen and we performed uh, predilation with 3.5 uh, millimeter uh, non-compliant balloons pres with pressures up to 28 atmospheres. However, we failed to fully dilate the lesions and we decided to use shorter balloon length with larger diameters with increasing pressures, but we kept uh, uh, having the same result. So we knew that we faced with a balloon undilatable lesion, and this is the current algorithm that we are using for treating uh, such phenomenon. Uh, first, initially we performed uh, an intravascular ultrasound showing uh, MLA of um, 2.6 uh, square millimeters. And uh, we used upfront uh, laser technique with and without contrast uh, simultaneous contrast injection. Using simultaneous contrast in injection is an off-label use. However, uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is a feasible and excellent option for uh, dilating uh, under expanded stents or, or previously in implanted stents with undilatable lesions. Uh, however, this failed. And uh, our next approach was uh, delivering multiple body wires uh, to the distal lumen and using the wire cutting, cutting effect that inflate, inflating uh, balloons with 2.5 to 4.0 millimeter uh, diameter with increasing pressures, but, we, uh, but these uh, tries also failed. We moved back to the uh, laser technique, but we kept on failing. Hence, uh, we decided uh, to uh, use simultaneous balloon inflations with a 2.5 millimeter NC balloons uh, with 24 atmosphere pressure but we had the same result. So our next technique was using uh, rotablation with 1.75 burr over a rota floppy wire, which was just exchanged uh, using a microcatheter. However, uh, we still uh, saw some underexpansion, and uh, we upsized the burr to a 2.15 uh, millimeter diameter, uh, and we used multiple plastics with it. However, uh, it was I mean, they lasted last, less than 10 seconds because the patient uh, was complaining of some chest pain. And uh, we finalized our results with uh, 3.5 uh, diameter of angiosculpt uh, scoring balloon uh, with its uh, spiral cutting blades. And uh, we were able to achieve uh, MLA of 5.1. And finally, we optimized uh, our results with some post dilation uh, controlled by IVUS having uh, an excellent final angiographic result. In conclusion, balloon undilatable lesions uh, can uh, occur frequently in contemporary non-CTO and CTO practice as well. And these highly resistant lesions uh, usually require several treatment uh, options and techniques for the successful uh, 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 revascularization. Rotational atherectomy only can be used in instant tristenotic lesions as a last resort option. And uh, lastly, uh, algorithmic selection of all these techniques can facilitate uh, lesion crossing and dilation. Thank you very much. That was great, great case. Um, I have a quick question for you, and then I, I want to know what Dr. Parikh thinks of, about my second question. The first question I have for you is, you said that when you finally got to rotational atherectomy, yes. you had to keep your burr runs with a 2.15 millimeter burr short because of chest pain. Is that right? Yes, so the patient, uh, patient developed some chest pain and uh, some, uh, during the whole case, some bradycardia was also uh, noticed. We had temporary pacemaker, uh, so temporary pacemaker was inserted. Uh, usually we rather use aminophilin 
uh, but in this case we used uh, we used a temporary pacemaker, but the uh, patient still had some chest pain, and that's why we decided to to do very short passes with uh, with uh, with that huge yeah. burr. There is a funny you know thing that happens that uh, we still don't fully understand uh, when when we introduce unusual energies into the right coronary system particularly, like vibration, like heat. Uh, th strange things seem to still happen. We, don't, we, we think they're tied to the parasympathetics and so forth, but we, we really functionally don't know. I think we have learned, though, that we can treat these folks successfully if you medicate them either in advance or chase after symptoms with aggressive medical therapy you can usually get through. I think the, the other question that I, I had for you, but I'm, I'm interested in knowing what Manish is thoughts are. This algorithm kind of reaches for um, somewhat less used techniques for fracturing refractory vessels. Uh, I think many of us would have gone earlier to, um, say, rotational or orbital atherectomy. And I'm just wondering what, what your practice is like and what your thoughts are about that algorithm. Yeah, so for under-expanded or non-expanded stents, uh, it's, number one, hope that you never get into that situation by doing plaque modification up front so that you could expand properly. But when you do get into that situation, I think laser is, is a very good uh, option. I think remember that the laser has different catheter sizes, and there's a photoacoustic and photochemical um, application here where if my 0.9 laser had not worked like yours didn't twice, now, we would have injected contrast and essentially created a microcavitary explosion to try to get it. I think putting 225 NCs almost never will work. Um, I think what I would have done first is put the sculpt and gone up to 28 atmospheres. Um, we've, oh, I've right. only broken or ruptured one sculpt, um, and it really tends to work well. The other thing you could use is a chocolate balloon, which is the most non-compliant balloon you have. And the third, which I've done in the last month twice, is a new Wolverine cutting balloon, which is much more deliver, deliverable than ever, would have put a one-to-one -one and gone up very high. And actually, I've had two cases. Again, these are all anecdotal cases. Um, but as Kirk said, in days gone by, all we had was rotablator. And the, whether it be Basil Jarish or whatever, the funny things happen. You gotta be prepared. Uh, patients are very uncomfortable. They almost always get bradycardic. And in this particular case, you got a beautiful result, but you also have to be prepared. If this gives, it may give full through, and you might have a perf. Mm -hmm. So you've got to yes. have a Jomet ready to go. Yes. Uh, you shouldn't be looking for a Jomet after it happens, because when you start, you got to be able to finish. And putting one of those things into that lesion would not have been a joy, sir. So I know we don't have it, but is shockwave going to work for this, or is it not going to fit in there? Well, this is the type of lesion that it's meant to address, and but. Uh, jury is decidedly out on Are this. Are they doing this in Europe, like with shockwave? It's the type of lesion for de novo calcium, not for ISR under-expanded calcium. So we don't know the answer to that. So you know, it is going to be a nice new option. It is a very bulky system. So if you can't get it there, you can't help. So we're going to see once the trials start. Just one other suggestion for laser is you can get more energy with a bigger laser catheter, so a 1.4 or 1.7. Uh, you'll need a bigger guide, but that will give you more ablation power to be able to potentially break, break the stents, which is what you're trying to do. That's a, that's a great point. And I just only want to reflect that in our algorithm, uh, we are actually including at the same level of using angioscope and the cutting balloon and the chocolate balloon that you mentioned, because those are excellent tools dedicated for these type of lesions. Uh, in this case, we use Angel Sculpt and, and uh, yep, thank you. Great, great, thank you very much.